Um, and thanks everyone for being here. It's really lovely to, uh, well, catch your faces before they disappeared and um, just know you're here. So I'm going to read for about 10, 10 15 minutes, some of the poems from, from the book. Um, and then we'll, um, yes, we'll, we'll have maybe one or two questions and have a, a break. So yes, here I am on the South Downs and I'm gonna take you up on the Downs right now with this poem called, Looking Towards Smock Mill. Looking towards Smock Mill, evening shadows make monsters of sheep. Even a crow has its life stretched. The sun raises me up like a beanstalk, sends my head grazing on the slope opposite. Here, beside the witch tree's propped stones, I'm transcribed by light and elevation. My flint bones and wormy flesh breathe effortlessly across chalk and tilth. My sister, the smock mill, looks out to sea with her dark arms flung. I'm stilt woman, giantess of the hill. If I turn, I'll vanish. I could peel my whole length roll me under my arm as a keepsake. Never before have I covered so much ground. I let myself float in the beaks of birds. So yes, you meet all sorts um, up on the downs, um, smock mills and birds, and sometimes people you might rather not meet. Um, and this next poem is called Drone Boys, and it's about my experience of wandering in a lovely quiet part of the Downs. And then, of course, there was a group of lads with drones having fun. Drone Boys. A van and two jeeps have rough tack tracked down to where everything ends in slope and sky. Beer cracking lads in the belly of the valley unkegging their bladders against the one bent tree. A light breeze lobs their heavy metal blare and boisterous pant hoots into the innocent pasture. The cash crop here bleats on dark stalks, their tails jumpy as catkins, their shoulders numbered. A drone revs up, a second joins it, slicing out territory over the struts of the burnt out barn. They circle for a wider curatage, herd space, scythe the air with their wasp waspish underhangs, come lower still until the field erupts in unstoppable bleating, as if the chalk hill has grown lungs. Every lamb is trying to cry itself back inside the womb. Their mothers stand like boulders, reply in deep baritone from black mechanical mouths. Udders triggered against the raptors' shrieking blades. So that's one of the two sheep poems you're going to get from me tonight. It's not by any means full of sheep, <laughs> you'd be glad to know. But sheep are a big part of the Downs. And in fact, my family, uh, my father's side, were sheep farmers on Romney Marsh, so maybe it's in my blood. Okay, a lovely, cheerful poem now about uh, um, a little boy that, well, inspired by a little boy it's, um, uh, that I know here, um, who loves dinosaurs and which little boy doesn't. So this is called Dinosaur Boy. When we arrive, the seas still beating out thunderous footsteps. You greet the cliff with ballyhoos and a small hammer. You're our chest high recruiting sergeant, drilling us in that compulsive stock taking you've made your own. You try Brachiosaurus and Triceratops for the zing of ancient flesh on your tongue snap and catch in crazy zigzag among spume sticky fusillades hurled by nine footers during last night's gale. 
pebbles come alive in your hands. Flint eggs, you call them, nesting them tight against your chest. We smash them for their innards like demented crows. Your Jacques Cousteau cracking the depths in your airtight helmet, whilst we, your able seamen, merely slacken the ropes, marvel as your head crackles in oceans far beyond us, letting monsters come up for air. I have found quite a few fossils and it's great fun looking um, for them. So uh, seagulls, <clears throat> very much a part of life down here, a mixed, a mixed blessing um, and amazing sunsets. And sometimes you can see the gulls going west towards the sunset. And this is called morning after. The moon's a stone that sunk way under, peeling the tide on automatic. Cormorants hoist black sails, suck on sun, dive. This is how to fish, beaks scissoring fat pieces of mottle and rainbow. On the beach, deck chairs preen and flutter. Children skedaddle, relentlessly harvesting day. No whisper about last night's brimstone party of scorched spume, the shoreline buttock bare in sea spew, oyster shuck, crab carapace. When drunken clouds raged biblical in a smashed blood yolk sky and marauders glided their Jurassic silhouettes west. So there are a handful of quite dark poems in, in the collection. Um, and this one is a, um, one of them. It's called The Rass. Now, uh, anyone who's into fishing may know that, you know, wrasses uh, are out in the sea here. They're not really what you want to catch. Um, fishermen are really after bass or, or fish like that. Um, and the wrass, is mainly born female and a few of them turn into males at maturity, which is an interesting way of going about life. Um, so I, I refer to the ras in the feminine form. The ras. She fell for his line, the jabbed on bait like a star in sky water. Now she lies in the crib of his capable hands, a jig hook deep in her gullet, all fight left in a sea that spits against the groins. I stop by the stockade of rods to watch his calm work with pliers. He's shielded the gills with kitchen paper, squints into her throat, inserts gently and deeper, but still the hook won't yield. It's bass we're after, our quotas one a day, the boats take all they want, no limit. His mate is bullish, sits eyes hooked to his own slack line, casts again into the wriggling sack of sea, dreams of a beauty hanging plumb to the drop, stiff fins fighting. Would it help if I held her? The angler flings me a smile, puts down his pliers in no kind of rush. It's an awkward pause. He faces away, gives a single well-aimed punch. So on to more cheerful topics. Um, me as a girl, in fact, um, I grew up in the village of Hale on the Hampshire-Surrey borders, and that's a flint village too. So I was very used to houses that are all studded with flints. And again, of course, here in Rottingdean, that's exactly what you'll find. Anyway, a recent trip home and memories. First kiss. Autumn has a way with light 
prolonging space, making horizon sail achingly close. A landslip of sights greets me from the top of Folly Hill. Georgian brickwork, the castle keep, clouds pinned by steeples, the gasworks, an ugly thumbprint. Behind me, bracken sprawls its cinnabar pelt, still warm with the possibility of adders. It's a long walk along flint walls to the swallow holes, where we banjaxed our sled one winter stiff Christmas, planted an apple pip, glimpsed the mythical stoat. When the school bell tolls, it's calling other lives. The weather vanes still undecided. North, east, south and west, who is the boy that I love best? Somewhere I'll find an oak that keeps the hoop of my arms in its memory. A girl on the brink, practicing al fresco kissing on one such flimsy day. So I'll leave myself hugging a tree there for a moment and uh, move on to more mature relationships. Uh, and this is called On Beacon Hill. Beacon Hill is literally round the corner from where, where I live. And um, that's where the beacon was lit um, when the Armada was approaching and uh, more recently at the Jubilee celebrations. Um, so there we go, a bit of history right next door. On Beacon Hill. On Beacon Hill, a kestrel ampletes in a patch of violet sky, its mate on the eggs somewhere brooding. You walk in silence, and like the farmer, I count my stock, eyes shaded, not for the man you were, but for the we we have become. Our feet in rhythm, mud muffling the ancient spine that binds these hills. Some call it a trudge, the unsure footwork, chalk rubble tricky as lime. But I love the climb, backwards always behind us, forwards always ahead. So just uh, two or three more poems and then we'll have our questions and answers and we can all see each other again. So um, the next poem is what I call my kind of on a riff slightly mad poetry. Um, it's uh, it's left field poem really. Um, and because we're in desperate need of rain, I, I'm kind of going to treat it as a, a rain dance, but it's actually a poem about, um, well, it's, it's a way of considering a particular relationship uh, in the light of weather. I think of rain and it's you, apocalyptic, tympanic on bins, drenched beyond dresh, gone before you arrive, on the slant, tensile, colour of bitumen, biting, spitting, driving, a wind-herded squall, drunk on isobars, smell like green thunder, like a car crash, like a direct hit, a flick in the eye, prismatic, on the wrong side of the court, flimsy as commitment, like a withholding, like the pearly nap, of a lawn, sheets of you straight from the hip, flush as furrows, a lip-smacked pond, oh, 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 skinny dipping in my pools, barbled as a catfish, sun-prickled, crop-wrecking, moon filator slick on the tongue, feather light falling in nanodrops, drip, 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 drip. So hopefully it's going to downpour any minute now because of that one. Um, I'm going to take us back up onto the downs for the last two poems of this section. So um, the next one is about a tractor. It's not easy um, 
driving uh, agricultural equipment up quite steep slopes. Um, so um, this one, I think, uh, is um, in homage to the farmers out there who are just round the corner trying to make a living. Skewed. Silhouetted on the ridge, single claw raised against the sun, it turns from bungalows nesting pinkly in the dip, attacks the long flounce of field draped to the copse. Only when a cloud swabs the soil do I see yellow wheels and a shirt that must be the driver. Less than half the field is tilled, wheat stubble jittering in the wind. The drill bit judders and starts to bite out a line, winces against the angles. It's planting seagulls, great squabbling rows. At each turn, the white gash erupts, mobs the glittering cabin. A local woman stops to bag up after her dachshund. He never gets his line straight. Look at the kink in that. She tells me he only ploughs on Sundays. The rest of the week, he hammers out dents in stock cars. The tractor presses on like a great scarab. It's dung balls in the next field waiting to be collected. And I'll finish this little section on um, actually the last poem in the book called Green Ray. I've only seen the green ray twice in my life. That's when the sun sets and if it's perfect conditions, absolutely no clouds over the sea, you get a flash of green just for literally a split second. I saw it in Morecambe Bay and I saw it again this year in Rottingdean. <laughs> so there we go. But this is really about a friendship. Green Ray. We do as trees do, bend away from the wind. Love is under every stone and in our quiet breathing. The sun's slow yoke hangs over the sea, ignites each wisp of hair at your temples. You more precious still, because just now, without the need to ask, you pulled a bloody splinter from your childhood, placed it in my cupped hands like a day-old chick. The hurt's been curled and waiting since you chose to make yourself unbreakable. It seems I've only seen you through polished glass, as if caught in cloud furrow or tasting ice. We're watching for the green ray, a flash more apple flesh than green. Illusory, so the science says, a moment already past, levitating from the deep. <laughs>